Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. Today we are going to start the Red Rad Centennial IPA. We've had the CIP going on in the boil kettle today and at the same time we've got the water, the hot liquor in the HLT up to temperature. We have all of our grains that we need in our mash tun ready to go. I'll get the lid off. There we go, so we're grinding up there big time. So we're going to dive straight in, make this as uh, efficient a video as possible so you guys can follow along if you're brewing this beer at home. So what we're going to do now is hook up the HLT to the mash tun and we're going to start to add the water. Uh, we're going to underlet the target mash temperature I believe is 67, hang on. Yeah, we want to hit 67 degrees. The strike water that I've got at the minute is about 80, 79, 80 degrees. It's a little bit too hot but I'll back that up with a little bit of cold water to achieve our target mash. And I'm also going to be burtonizing the water, so for me to do that, I have to add some uh, sulfuric acid and some uh, DWB, which is basically gypsum and calcium chloride. So uh, the proprietary blends I use are AMS and DWB, but other substitutes are available. You'll be able to buy it from Malt Miller or something like that. Uh, but you want to get your water tested and that water test will tell you what you need to burtonize your water. Uh, so that's what I'm going to go ahead and do this morning and we will get mashed in straight away so uh, we can get on with other parts of the process such as weighing out the hops. Right, the final mash ingredient is of course the AMS. We put that in when the hot water is visible, so we're not concentrating the acid in one position. And this is to correct our pH value. Don't worry if you're not doing water treatments at the moment. Just follow the recipe as you are with your own stuff and you will be fine. I'm not even uh, very good with the water chemistry at the moment but what we're doing is working so you know as to say if it ain't broke don't fix it there you can see it's a pretty thick mash so far we're still waiting for about 50 litres to go in and I'm going to have to add some cold at some point as well so I'm going to mix this up and uh, we'll come back when we've hit our desired mash temp So we've got a nice full mash tun here, really is about the limit of this kit when we get to 500 litres of say 5.5-600% uh, uh, beers. Right, the, uh, the mash temp, I don't know if you can see this or not, we're pretty close to kind of where we want to be, about half a degree but that 
kind of varies depending on where you're going to put the probe. So I say they're pretty, pretty close to 67 degrees C on average. So what I'm going to do now is just rinse off the thermometer probe to go back into storage and then grab the hose pipe, turn the water on, it'd be helpful wouldn't it, Harry? Zoom back out of course and uh, just clean down the mash paddle. I've been thinking about making a, a new mash paddle in a future video. I cut this one down because when I made it we were brewing on a, a rack, on a, on a stillage and uh, it was too long so I had to cut it down to get it underneath the racking but now on reflection I could kind of do with a longer one to give me a bit more leverage when I'm lifting the mash up from the bottom of the tub because it is a metre deep. Right, we're ready to cover this up and what we will do then is come back in 45 minutes and we'll start to recirculate the liquid in here to allow it to clear up. That will give us a nice indication of what colour, how close we're going to get to the colour that we want to achieve anyway. And talking about colour that we want to achieve, I don't know if you watched yesterday's vlog, but uh, we did a little bit of a mini mash to see what colour we would actually achieve. And I've left it in the fridge overnight after we'd already assessed it yesterday. I don't know what it's going to look like now, this is a first time for me too. Okay. Kind of sort of reddish brown. There we go. So that's uh, after a day in the fridge or a night in the fridge and it's cleared. Well, it hasn't really cleared, but it's cooled, should I say. So that's the colour that we've got. It's a little bit lighter than what it shows on the camera. But yeah, wow. Well. we'll see if we. Yeah. We'll see if we end up with something like that when we're finished today, eh? So that alarm, that alarm tells us that we've had a 45 minute match. It's time to start the ball off now. So I've got a couple of hoses here, which I attach to my mash pump, which is just down here, connected to the plate heat exchanges framework. So we'll put the supply, that's the outlet, and then down here we've got the supply. So we'll just open this up. This here is the, uh, this is the, um, sparge arm supply. Right, so we've got liquid in there. Normally what I tend to do for the first stage or two is just remove the rotating sparge arms from the, uh, well, from the rotating sparge arm. <laughs> just so we don't get blocked up with grain. And that's the mash pump flowing. You'll just be able to see in there. So what I'll do is just slow that flow down. Because we've got a really deep grain bed, I don't want to uh, don't want it to settle. Interrupted by the phone. It's Craig giving me a ring. Uh, yeah, so I don't want the grain bed to settle and compact to prevent us having a steady flow off so I'll, I'll do this really really with kid gloves so that's going to take 15 minutes to clear up or thereabouts so in that time what I'm going to do is recirculate what's in this tank I've filled it with some acid now there we go and the idea behind that is that that's going to sanitise the plate heat exchanger for us before we do the transfer 
So that's going to have 15 minutes of recirculating that acid to clear things up while we at the same time recirculate the mash to clear the liquid. Then I'll empty that acid out and we'll transfer this liquid across. I have my sparge water over here sat at 77 degrees C at the moment. It may go up to 80. So that's ready to go when I'm ready to push the button on it. So we've got another 15 minutes waiting time before we come back and we start the transfer. Now at this point we can if we like do a, uh, an iodine test to see if the mash has converted completely. So I'll just grab a little plate and we'll do that now. So I normally have like a little white saucer and a little dropper bottle with iodine in it. And because it's such an easy, quick and easy test, you know, it really is worth doing every time you, uh, every time you make a beer. So all we've done is just captured a little bit of that wort from the, uh, from the sparge arm. I'll just rotate this so we can see what we're doing. And then all I'm gonna do is just drop a little bit of iodine in there. And as you can see, the color has stayed brown, yellowy brown. It hasn't gone black. And that's telling us that we've got good conversion in there. If that would have been black, then there would have still been starch remaining. But I'm sure that you professional brewers out there, professional home brewers, know exactly what this is about. This is for the people who don't. So that tells me, you can see there's a little bit of black on the grain starch, on the, uh, on the gr grain husk, the little bits of grain husk that's in there, telling me that there is still some starch on the husk. So after an extra 15 minutes of recirculating, that should go away. That's the plan anyway. Uh, we could test it again, but I'm pretty familiar with the kit and I know that this is going to be fine once the Voloff is over. And this, it, this recirculation that we're doing here is called the Voloff. So when that's complete, uh, we'll be ready to move on to the next step and transfer it into the boil kettle. Okay, so I can turn the pump off now. That is the acid that we've had cleaning the plate chiller. So I'm just gonna suspend this cable and this pipe work up here now. I will, it won't fall off. Right, lovely. So now what we're going to do, reposition the camera, see if we can get a pretty good shot. Uh, see if that's a good enough shot for us to see what we're doing. So what we're going to do now is isolate the vol off. It's running crystal clear out, it, out of here now. So it looks very nice. We're going to transfer that pipe across to here. Before we do that however, we're going to make sure we've got all of the acid out of the uh, plate exchanger and everything else. We've got a little valve down there to drain it and a valve in the drain there which comes out the bottom of the kettle down here. So now that that's completely drained, make sure that all of the chambers in the Playtex have, have drained out completely and we'll start the transfer. While we're waiting for that, this is the hot water from the HRT. We can hook that up to the spar jar. Wipe up a little bit of spillage there so we don't end up with a sticky mess. Beautiful. Right, we're drained out now, so we'll just close the valve back off and open the sparge, open the runoff, and you should hear it hitting the deck. Then we're going to control the feed into the kettle with this valve up here and over here we're going to pop back on 
the rotating bar guards. Now that we've just got water coming through the top of here, and we can control the speed with which the sparge is delivering water to the top of the mash by using the valve just here on the top of the mash tun. If we turn it up fully, and I'm pretty much talking to an empty frame there, but if we turn it up fully, you'll see that we've got the mash rotating nicely. But we just want this level to drop a little bit, so we'll just rein it back a touch. And now we're gonna sit and wait for the transfer, folks. So this has had an hour's mash, 45 minute mashing, 15 minute recirculating, and now we're just gonna rinse the grains through whilst we transfer it across there. This should take approximately an hour because we don't wanna rush this process. Otherwise we may end up with a stuck sparge and that will effectively ruin our brew day. So whilst I'm brewing, I like to use a little bit of what's called anti-foam in the boil to prevent any silly boil overs as we achieve a hot break. So this stuff, I normally just pop in about 25 millilitres. Oh, I normally just eyeball it if I'm honest. Dilute that with water and then add that as and when it's needed. Just in case anyone's not familiar with this stuff. If you search FD2OP anti-foam, you should find it. So yeah, that stuff is gonna go in to uh, the boil later on at a latter date. But while we're here, we may as well weigh out the hops. So we've got three editions of Centennial. And we've got a big 10 kilo bag of Centennial hops here. This was the smallest that they had at Brookhouse Hops. And I must say, I only ordered five, and because they didn't have the vac sealer working, he sent me ten. You can't knock that, can you? So I'm gonna get a couple of jugs out. I think 560 grams on all of them. I think we'll fit that into these small polycarb jugs. So let's turn the scales on. Then I like to just snip a corner of a bag off, just enough for the hops to flow out neatly, and then it's easy for me to back up later on. So 560. There we go. Me up. Oh, perfect. That was more luck than judgment. 560 on the nose. Wow, I can smell them already. That's at zero. There we go, 560, oh it smells fantastic, and then this is the Whirlpool edition, which again, for us, I'll just tear that out, here's another 560. There you go, that's good enough for the girls I go out with. So that's all equal editions, and then what I'm going to do is just vacuum bag back up so we don't lose the freshness of these beautiful centennial hops. Position the vac cleaner in a funny position because the bag's so big. I'm used to these big 10 kilo bags. That's got him. Solid pack. Seal her up. And then we'll put this back in the hop cupboard. Uh, I am getting a hop fridge actually while we uh, are getting into the warmer months. Thankfully, it's bloody freezing in here today, so it shouldn't make much difference. There we go. Solid vac packed Centennial 2018 crop. Let's get them bad boys put back in storage. Oh, these are so powerful. They're gonna be absolutely, oh, gonna be amazing in the beer. Really, really nice, really nice hop, this Centennial. 
So the first 45 minutes of the boil are without any hops whatsoever. So in that time, I've managed to clean out the mash tun that's ready now, put to bed. And I've also managed to put some insulation around the bottom of these tanks here. But that alarm tells us that it's time for the first hop drop. So the hop schedule is uh, one at 10 minutes, one at five minutes, and then a whirlpool for 30 minutes below 80 degrees. So I'm gonna get the 10 minute hop drop. And in that 10 minute hop drop, I'm gonna include uh, the protoflock tablets, two, four, and I use one for every 100 liters. It works for me. So to prevent a boil over, we'll just reset this for five minutes. There we go. And we'll just kill the heat on the boil because what we don't want to do is have it go in our face when we add these hops. So cautiously, I'll open the tank. Remembering that this is just off the boil. I'll add a little bit of anti-foam and then we'll add our hops. And you can see just the addition of the hops causes a boil. So if there's any heat in there as well, then the heat makes it worse. So I like to just knock the heat off these days and uh, do it that way. Right, close the lid. Rummage, fumble around, trying to do it one-handed. There we go. And then we'll go back over here and we'll turn the heat back on to continue the boil. There we go. So we'll come back in four minutes time and we'll be adding hop drop number two, which is there, five minutes. Right, the alarm's just gone off. Same thing again. Quickly open the boil kettle and the element is off. And in we go again for hot drop number two. There we go. Let's get that boil back on for the last five minutes and then we're going to chill 280 before we add the whirlpool addition. And there we have it. While I navigate the stairs with the tripod, <laughs> not very easy. The final alarm is going off, so that means the final alarm is going off, so that means we kill the heat, we kill the alarm, and we set up now to uh, chill the whole shebang down to 80 degrees, ready for the Whirlpool Hot Edition. So we'll get some water flowing through there first and then we'll start to flow uh, the liquid, the lovely, lovely liquid through first the whirlpool port and then we'll send it through the, uh, the transfer hose to sanitise that as well. They've all had an acid treatment but I like to do it anyway. I've also pushed the acid out with the beer and then reconnected the hose. So as you can see down here, we are getting some heat coming out of this uh, pipe. So I'm going to just set up to recapture all that energy and we'll use that later on for cleaning the boil kettle because we obviously don't have a brew day tomorrow. There we go. So uh, we'll watch that temperature come down. We're already at 98 degrees. And as soon as we hit 80, we're going to whack in the final edition of Centennial. Now it's also at this point when I'll set up some acid in the fermenter and recirculate it to sanitise it prior to us putting the beer in there. I don't do it too soon before because we've got a 30 minute hop stand anyway. That's more than sufficient to sanitise the tank. Uh, before we put the beer in there. 15 minutes will do it. Okay, we're a smidge below 80 degrees C. 
as you can see there, 77.1. So what I'm going to do is just kill the recirculation because I don't want to draw all these hops into the filter. We're going to put the timer onto 30 minutes, like that. Turn it on and go and ditch this lot into the boil kettle. So now, of course, we can open it up without fear of getting covered in boiling wort because, well, it ain't boiling anymore, folks. Check out those babies. Right, we're going to close this up and what I'm going to do is quickly jump in the car, shoot at home and take the dog and get myself a change of clothes because this afternoon to celebrate brewing three back-to-back -back beers I'm going to go and have a couple of pints with Craig after work so what I really do is set up the brew kit on a CIP and uh, go and have a few beers and then at least I'm on site. If anything goes wrong, I can come down and turn it off. Uh, but generally, I'll set it up on a CIP, leave it running on a timer, and uh, it'll turn off like at six, seven o'clock tonight. But I'll just pop my nose in to make sure it's all off before I finally go home. And then we'll come in tomorrow, and Friday will be a clean down day, and we'll strip the kit and clean everything down while the beer is sat in the fermenter, bubbling away. Right, I've quickly managed to get back just like two minutes after the alarm went off. So we've uh, hooked up the pipe now to the fermenter. We're just about to start the transfer to put all of the beer in there. Then I'll rinse the kettle out, leave it on a CIP and go and have a pint. So first things first, um, that on, water on. And then we'll start moving the beer. Now it comes down the bottom, so we we'll close that valve. And then we just have to regulate the temperature. And I normally just do that by putting my hand on the uh, outlet. Generally get a good idea of where I am with it. Right, that seems good enough to me. So now we're just gonna have to wait maybe 30 minutes, 20 minutes for the transfer to take place. 500 litres of beer from one tank to the next. Exchanging heat on the way. We're still in the process of finishing off the transfer, but I think it's time we add the USO5 yeast. In my opinion, one of the best yeasts on the market. Clean and dry and no residual off flavours. So we'll pop this in now, and uh, as soon as this transfer is finished, folks, that's it. I am literally wrapping it up for the day. So if you've got any questions about the beer or the brew day, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try and answer them over the next few days. If you've brewed the recipe yourself, let me know. Uh, maybe even video it, send me a link to the video and I'll watch it and let you know what uh, what I think but other than that folks I think that about wraps it up for the day so we'll see you on tomorrow's vlog bit of a surprise this weekend Tom's coming over on Saturday will we get him on video or not? I don't know, he's coming over in the evening maybe a few shenanigans we shall see then, cheers